Okie doke, I decided to stop the previous video and start a new one. <clears throat> and so we've done the basic explanation of how the model works, now we're going to look at how the economy develops in three stages. The first stage is the primitive economy in which AY is very small. So early on, right? Productivity is low. So we're talking 100 years ago, 500 years ago. Okay, we've literally got shovels or maybe not even shovels <laughs> to extract the resource from the ground. Okay. And similarly, technology in the final goods sector is also very primitive. So both AY and AX are low. Note for simplicity, we're assuming they grow at equal rates here. So what happens? Well, if, where do we start? If um, AY and AX are both low, then the extraction rate, even if we put a lot of labor in here, and even if we're close to the surface, so AD is low, if AX is extremely low, then X is going to be low. Okay, there's very little extraction. Think of extracting coal or iron ore hundreds of years ago. We're scratching the surface. X is very low, which means that AD dot over AD is very low. It's close to zero. What that means is that the cost of extraction or the difficulty of extracting the stock stays the same over time. We're just scratching the surface, right? We're not going deeper. <clears throat> so what does that mean? It means we're effectively in the case with um, a limitless stock, the sort of coal case, because any increase in depth or even exhaustion is so far away in time, it's negligible. It's like we don't need to account for it for the time being. So what's going to happen then? Of course, we're going to get an increasing extraction rate with technological progress, and we're going to get uh, a constant resource price. So X is small. D and AD are constant. We know these, yeah, and then that means, so AD is constant. LX, will we'll end up with a balanced growth path on which LX is also more or less constant. This is approximations. And therefore X dot is the same as AX dot, or a X dot over X is AX dot over AX, which is G. So the extraction rate grows at the growth rate. Um, GDP grows at this growth rate. And the price of the resource is constant. So this is like the coal effectively in the limit. This sort of collapses to the coal case. Okay. Does this make sense for coal? Well, we already talked about that. Yes, it does. It also makes sense for iron ore and a bunch of other resources. If you think of Kirana, <clears throat> right, are the stocks of iron ore that are being extracted in Kirana, are they like significantly harder to extract than what was being extracted 30 years ago, 50 years ago, 100 years ago? No, it's like 50% pure iron right under the surface. Okay, so it makes total sense that the prices stay the same. In fact, um, you might want to think about one reason why prices you might even expect under these circumstances prices would go down is to do with the relative growth rates of these uh, 
AX and AY. So AY, that's labor productivity here, which includes manufacturing industries and so on, but it also includes healthcare, education, office jobs, and so on. And in general, we know that labor productivity grows faster in things like manufacturing than it does in service industries. So simplified, this AY is a sort of mixture of manufacturing and services, whereas uh, coal extraction is essentially a kind of, it's like manufacturing, right? It's highly capital intensive. So we might expect AX to grow faster than AY. If that is the case, then we think back to this picture. The wage, the overall wage in the economy will be determined primarily by growth here, because this is the big part of the economy. But the productivity in the mine is determined by the growth of AX. So if AX is growing faster than the wage, extraction costs will actually tend to decline. And that might explain the long run decline in prices up to the 70s, between like 1900 and 1970. If you look back at the graphs that we showed before, resource prices tended, if anything, to decline. What happened after that? <laughs> well, uh, oil producers started to exert their market power and drove energy prices up. And of course, this isn't in the model here, but energy is a major input into extraction of other resources. So when energy prices go up, that pushes the price of extraction of coal up as well, which explains why it's the main explanation why prices haven't continued to go down. <laughs> okay, so that's things that aren't really in the model, but connecting it to reality. Okay, so that's the initial phase, the primitive economy in which AI is very small, AY is very small, and AX. Okay, and I'm gonna make these videos short. I think I'm gonna stop this one. Yeah, I will.